Hello friends and welcome to edupediaworld.com, your destination to online education. Friends, as far we are continuing with the sessions of the gradation of physical properties, so today we shall discuss the conduction and also learn the variation of conduction property in periodic table with respect to groups and periods. So let's start first with the concept of the conduction. So what is conduction? Well, conduction is the transfer of energy in the form of heat or electricity from one atom to another by the direct contact. Well, it occurs when temperature increases, the molecules start vibrating and this vibration and movement pass the heat energy to the surrounding molecules. Or you can say that the vibration of free electron, that is a valence electron, and this vibration occurs with a rapid movement which gives rise to the electrical conductivity. So let's understand these types of conduction. We have two types of conduction, conduction of heat and conduction of electricity. Let's understand now the property of conduction with respect to the elements. We know that we have two types of conduction. That is a thermal we also call heat and electrical conductivity that is electricity now we know that if we talk about the elements we have metals metalloids and non-metals. We know that metals are the good conductor of thermal and electrical conductivity. Metalloids are the semiconductors and non-metals are bad conductors whether it is a thermal or electrical. So firstly, let's understand the heat conductivity or say the thermal conductivity. Well, you might have observed that a frying pan becomes hot when we kept on the flame. It is because the heat passes from the flame to the utensil and when the pan is removed from the fire it slowly cools down. Why does it cool down? The heat is transferred from the pan to the surroundings. So you can understand that in both cases the heat flows from hotter object to the colder. Heat flows from hotter to colder. Well, this process by which heat is transferred from the hotter end to the colder end of an object or an element is known as conduction of heat, that is thermal conductivity. To check this concept, let's take an example like, let's take an example, take a beaker. Put it on the flame with the water in it. Put some objects like uh, some metallic pan of cooking has a plastic or wooden handles. You can put some metal spoon, pencil, scale or any article you can dip into like that like divider also you can keep so what happens the material which allow heat to pass through them easily are the conductors of heat like this will give a conduction that will get hotter the divider will be get hotter 
pencil and scale which are of modern and plastic will not get heated up easily so these kind of materials or objects we call them the insulators for example aluminium iron and copper are the good conductors of heat these are the element which good conductor of heat and electricity both and if we talk about the insulator that is a poor conductors we can say that the non metals and such as plastic or wooden materials can be bad conductor of heat and electricity the second concept is about the heat conductivity that is thermal conductivity let's talk about the electrical conductivity well what is electrical conductivity friends electrical conductivity is nothing but a movement of electrically charged particle through a transmission medium like we have said earlier metals are the good conductors non metals are the bad conductors electrical conductors so let's take any reason why we say metals are good conductors of heat and electricity let's talk about the heat why are the heat conductive elements well in metals the force of attraction between the particles is very strong first the forces of attraction between the particles are very strong so the particles are tightly packed together this allow easy and fast flow of heat energy through the metal objects it should be noted friends that air and water are the poor conductors of heat so friends this is the reason why metals are said to be the good conductors of heat just because they have the molecules or the particles of the metals have, have are very tightly packed and the force of attraction between that is called the intermolecular force between the particles are very strong so the flow of heat is very easy the electricity why we say that metals are good conductors of electricity just because the metals have the free electrons that is the valence electrons which are closely bonded to the atom so they have free valence electrons which actually acts as charged carriers in metallic structure which allows the electric current to flow through the metal objects so these are the two basic reasons why we call the metal as a good conductor of heat and electricity now let's talk about the non metals first we talk about the heat why we say non metals are bad conductor of heat and electricity so most of non metals have covalent structure first of all they have a covalent structure so these structures basically does not allow heat energy to travel from one point to another doesn't allow the heat to travel from one point to another as in metals the heat energy quickly travel from the point to another due to the vibration of free electrons in the electronic bond screening 
and the metal ions well in non metals the electrons are bound inside the atom so cannot help the transfer of heat energy the second point we can write that the electrons are bound inside the atom which actually does not help the transfer of heat let's talk about now the electricity conductivity well the electrons in non metals have very fewer free electrons and are held tightly that they do not allow the movement freely the free electrons are fewer they don't allow the movement freely well friends let's understand by this as the non metal have the covalent bonds which are actually very strong so they don't allow the non metal to pass heat or electricity through them so these are the uh, some basic reason why metals are the good conductors and non metal are the bad conductors of thermal and electrical conductivities so here we conclude we have metals with free electrons to pass electricity we have the structure of metal allow the heat to pass through them whereas in non metals no free electrons well they have free electrons but they are much fewer free electrons and are very tightly packed to each other they are not allowed to move freely so they cannot conduct electricity which doesn't allow free movement and the bonding that is a covalent bond which does not allow the heat pass through them that is from one point to another that is one particle to another they don't allow now let's talk about the variation of conductance in periodic table well in thermal conduction and heat conduction decreases as we move from left to right well in groups the thermal conductivity in a group increases when we move from top to bottom in a group as the metallic character increases in a group also the electrical conductivity as in the periods when we move from left to right the conductivity of the element first increases then decreases and in group it generally increases as the metallic character increases but we have some exceptions also for example if we talk about the periods why it happens for example let's talk about the third period where the sodium magnesium and aluminum are all metals and they have the metallic bonding in which positive metals ion are delocalized the electrons and these electrons are freely to move and carry charges when we go from sodium to aluminum the conductivity of the element increases why just because the number of electron increases and there are more electrons which can move and carry charge so the electrical conductivity increases and from the silicon which is the metalloy and has a giant covalent bonding and this giant lattice structure similar to that of diamond in which each silicon atom is covalently bonded to four other silicon atoms
in a tetrahedral arrangement. You will be learning the details in the, your future sections or you can see the higher standards. So in which each silicon atom is covalently bond to four other silicon atom with the tetrahedral arrangement and this extended in the three dimensional to form its structure. So it is a called a semiconductor. So friends, then it keeps on decreasing just because we move towards the non-metal as in phosphorus, sulfur and chlorine, the outer electrons are not free to move and carry charge because they are held strongly in the covalent bond and in argon which exists in a single atom, the outer electrons are not freely to move and carry charge because they are held strongly in the stable third energy level. So now let's conclude. In the periodic table, when we move into the period, that is when we move from left to right, the electrical conductivity first increase, then decrease. And the thermal conductivity, basically thermal conductivity also depends upon the element, but it generally it decreases when we move from left to right. And we talk about the groups, when we move from top to bottom, generally the conductivity, that is the electrical and thermal conductivity increases as the metallic character increases. But yes, we have certain ex exceptions also, by which the general trend does not allow all the group to follow these trends. So I end up with the session and the next session we shall learn about the density of the elements and also we shall learn about the variation of density of the element in the periodic table with respect on groups and periods. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos.